Hey, what's up, guys? Blaine Duncan here from Halloween Lives, a podcast of Micah Myers, joined, as always, by my brother, Austin. What's going on, man? How you doing? Dude, I'm doing good. We got a banger of an episode today. We got an awesome guest. Um, we got Fan of the Week coming back. And we got your birthday surprise coming in at the end. Oh, that's right. I forgot. Yeah. And we should, I, I get a birthday, new birthday t-shirt from Austin as well. You can't really see it, but uh, I already, I already got part of my gift from him and it's this new t-shirt. So thanks for that. Uh, no, you're, you're absolutely right. We got an awesome episode coming up. We've kind of, uh, we, we, we haven't had a fan of the week in a few weeks just because we've had some sort of interesting dynamics go on. Either we had the draft going on and last week we had to, like I said, we had to punt a little bit because the guest that we had on that was having just some significant internet issues. So um, yeah, we're bringing back the the fan of the week and I'm excited to to see what you pulled for us this week. Um, but yeah, so our guest tonight, uh, we're, we're both super excited. Somebody that we talked about very early on when we were starting to talk about the creation of this podcast, uh, somebody that we wanted to get on the show. Um, we're going to be talking with Christy from Nightmare Toys. And uh, man, let's just go ahead and bring her in because we're, we're super stoked to have her. What's up, Christy? How you doing? Hello. How are you guys doing? I'm good. Thank you very much for having me on. I really appreciate it. Yeah, the, the pleasure is ours. We're, uh, we're we're really excited. Like I said, that's that's no lie. When Austin and I were talking about who we wanted to have as as a guest on this show, very early on, your name came up because I, I think you're just. I, I've seen some of the work that you've done before, and I love kind of your take and your really your honest take on on a lot of these different horror movies. And that's really what we're going to get into tonight um, yeah. as we talk about you know, what you think about some of maybe more recent, the, the more recent Halloween movies. Um, but then of course, just in general, we're going to talk about uh, the franchise, but um, Christy, tell us a little bit about yourself. You're obviously you run nightmare toys, which I'm sure everybody who's watching this knows about nightmare toys, but give us the rundown. Um, when did you first open nightmare toys? And I know you, you know, just in the last uh, few years, I think it's been, you, you moved to Vegas. So tell us a little bit about your store and, and uh, how, how that came to be. All right. Well, first off, Happy birthday. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Appreciate <laughs> and I like that. The shirt. The shirt's cool. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I have <laughs> um, but yeah, we opened, uh, me and Philip uh, opened Nightmare Toys uh, in 2017 in Huntsville, Alabama. Um, we just had a 2,000 two square foot store um, and we knew we wanted to get the online going. And we, I eventually got the online blew up. And we decided we needed to just move from Huntsville. The in-store just wasn't doing as well. I mean, it's, you know, it's Alabama. <laughs> right. Not a lot of people were coming in the store, honestly. I'm just being honest. All the time, time, yes. And then it was right. like. <laughs> so we decided to move it to Vegas. We knew it would be a good fit. And so we did in 2020, right in the middle of the pandemic. And we oh. opened the store. It was June 3rd, I think it was. June 1st. June oh. 1st of 2020 uh, in Vegas and been doing good ever since. And so we decided to open a restaurant bar. So we now have Nightmare Cafe, which is next door. It is not a coffee shop. It is a restaurant bar. I named it Nightmare awesome. Cafe after the 1992 series Nightmare Cafe with Robert England because it went awesome. with Nightmare Toys. So that's super cool. It, so, so was it just one of those deals where, you know, obviously you'd probably been a horror fan your entire life and you were just like, we, yeah. we need this. The horror fans need this in our lives. We need a horror yeah. store. Was that, was that kind of the idea behind it? Yeah, I think so. Um, I had had a job that I just needed to like, it was just time to quit and I needed to do something else. And uh, me and Philip was, he, Philip was just like, look, you like horror stuff. You like collecting. So why don't we just open you a little store for something to do? This was supposed to be just a little something to do. Right, right. <laughs> Here we are. Right. Um, <laughs> but yeah, and, you know, it just kind of blew up from there. But yeah. That's fantastic. That's fantastic. I know it's, I haven't been out to Vegas now and probably it's been about five years, but it's definitely on my, on my to-do list when I get out there. So I'm, I'm excited to see it in person myself someday. And obviously just, I've, I've seen the website. I've, I've obviously seen the photos, uh, you know, Instagram pictures, things like that, that you post. And it just looks like it's like the, you know, heaven for horror fans, basically. That's, that's what it is. I'm trying to make like a Toys R Us in a way yeah. uh, for horror fans, but I have, you know, clothing and everything else. I, it, it's a mixture of a lot of different types of items. Uh, you can come in and find jewelry, clothing, shoes. We're now carrying shoes, which is nice. Awesome. Um, 
you know, stickers, toys, masks, makeup, all that stuff. Uh, That's awesome. Mask paint and all that. So, yeah. <laughs> now, you, go, you go to conventions too, right? I mean, you're, you you kind of like travel around and you've, you've sort of set up shop at conventions, don't you? Yes. Yes. We do okay. several conventions. We got Texas Frightmare coming up here in a couple of weeks. Awesome. Good deal. Uh, Halloween 45? Maybe, maybe not. Um, No, I think we might skip that one. Okay. Sure. Yeah. yeah. That's okay. <laughs> I just, I had to ask the question. We're talking Halloween. So I, I, I thought I'd ask. No, that's yeah. awesome. So, yeah. uh, we're, you know, we're obviously here to, uh, to talk about Halloween and, and, and tell us a little bit about what you remember from your earliest memories as a, you know, uh, becoming a fan was, was the original 1978, the first film that you saw, or was it a little bit later on? Um, or did you see one of the, I guess, one of the, the sequels earlier and you saw the 78 version later on? Um, it was the 78 version. Um, this will tell my age, but um, my parents had recorded a whole bunch of movies off of HBO onto my beta. I had a that beta. Nice. In my room. Awesome. Awesome. <laughs> so, <laughs> and I had this horror movie I ever saw silver bullet on beta. That's, that's a true story. So yeah. Yeah. Well, it's my favorite werewolf movie. Right. Um, so I had uh, the 78 Halloween on there and that was, that was the first one. And I just fell in love with it. I loved the, the whole ambiance and the spookiness and mysteriousness um, of Michael Myers in the, in the original one. Awesome. Awesome. And, and what was it that, you know, obviously you talk about that spookiness and that ambiance, but uh, you know, when I think about that movie and, and Austin and I have talked about this on the show quite a bit, that there's, there is like a magic to that movie that, and, and there's something to even watching it on Halloween night. Like it just, it feels different than yeah. a lot of other horror movies, but why do you think that was? I mean, what, what was the secret recipe that they did there that has created what we know today, the, the Halloween franchise that we know today? What do you think about that? Well, the Halloween franchise we know today is a little bit different from what they had created from 1978, in my opinion. Um, <laughs> but okay. for 78, it was very special because um, Michael Myers in that one, he was just, he was hiding behind corners, hiding behind doors. He just kind of, he stabbed. He, he didn't like get all crazy like he's getting now. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> and it was so scary because you didn't know where he was going to pop up at. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Um, and there wasn't any, there wasn't really any blood in that movie except for maybe just the one part. I know the one part um, towards the beginning when um, Dr. Did Loomis finds matches and you see the guy off that's, you know, you can see a little bit of blood on him, but there's right. not a lot of blood in that movie, which is great because everybody always thinks you got to have blood in a horror movie to make it great. And no, you don't. Halloween right. shows you that you don't. Absolutely. So I think that's one really good thing. And then of course the soundtrack just Yeah, you can't be I mean, it just no. really makes the movie. It really does. It does. Yeah, it does. And 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 now when after you saw 78, did you did you kind of were you hooked? I mean, was it sort of like, okay, I I can I can get into this and and at that point, what sequels were out? Do you remember? Kind of. Yeah. Um, part two was already out. Um, let's see. I think only I think only part two and part three at that time was was out. Okay. Um, of course, you know, at that time, I wasn't a big part three fan at that right. time. Nobody <laughs> was. Yeah. I think we all went through that with part three. We're like, what? Wait a minute. Yes. But anyway. Um, but yeah, part two was out. And I love part two. Part two is like my favorite sequel yeah. from all of them <laughs> oh that's awesome yeah well so no you brought up part three i think that's a that's a great segue because um and and i'm the same way austin is the same way it was such a forgotten film i you know even as a as, as a huge halloween franchise uh fan I refused to even watch Halloween three for the longest time. I mean, I just, I knew Michael wasn't in it and I was just like, I had heard terrible things about it. I, I refused to watch it. And then finally I watched it and it was like, damn, that's actually, that's a pretty good movie. Right. I mean, we, we can talk about the fact that maybe if they would have just left Halloween out of the, the title, it would have been a totally received totally differently. But what is it about Halloween three that to you, I guess that, you know, you didn't, you didn't like it originally, but then now it's obviously, you know, based on some of the artwork in your background, it's, it's a movie that you're a fan of. It is. Yeah. Well, obviously when I was a kid, I was all about the Michael Myers thing. And then, you know, he wasn't in it. Um, and before I even really did watch Halloween three, for the first time, 
I'm telling you this, and this is, and this is, it might not sound weird to you, but back in the day, the video stores, you know, we all go in and we look at the covers and we kind of judge movies by the covers and we're like, ooh, it's got a lot of blood and it says massacre. I'm getting it, you know, right. kind of the thing. And the cover of Halloween 3 just didn't entice me for the longest time. Sure. That makes I mean, sense. I, I get it. Weird, but that's why I didn't watch it for a, for a long time. And then I think I watched it on TV. I think it came on like TV and I was like, oh, I'll give it a try then. Right. But I didn't like it when I was a kid. I liked it as I got older because I appreciated it a lot more for not having him in it. Although he is kind of been on the TV. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but I appreciated it for what it is. And it is an excellent, excellent just Halloween movie, like Halloween the season movie. Like right. if you just need a movie to watch on Halloween or if you just need to tell someone that doesn't do horror movies or whatever that just wants to really watch a scary Halloween-esque movie, right. Halloween 3 is perfect. Awesome. It's just so Halloween esque. It just screams Halloween, the season Halloween, and I love that. And the and the soundtrack well, is scary. Mm -hmm. Who needs Michael? Right. Talk is scary enough. Right. No, it's true. <laughs> the 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 soundtrack and the visuals and everything in that movie too. It, it's it screams kind of like that nostalgic '80s horror. I think even they knew that it would it would uh, kind of play up as as time went on. Um, but yeah, Blaine and I had a very similar experience. I mean, we were doing the same thing. We were going to Hollywood video renting movies and there was always Halloween coming through, but we never, you know, we'd skip right over that Halloween three. Yeah. I'm sure there were probably far few uh, VHSs there for that film than there were for, you know, the original and four and so on. Oh yeah, yeah definitely. That's true. <laughs> I actually, uh, I don't know if I've, I've ever told this on the show before. Maybe I have, but when I bought Halloween two, it was in a, a double pack, two DVDs, Halloween two and Halloween three. And I'm not yeah. even joking you that I didn't watch that Halloween three DVD for at least a decade. That's, that's how long I had it for. <laughs> I just saw Halloween three, probably 20, 13 2014 something like that i mean it's been it's been about 10 years since i've since i've seen it and i obviously fell in love with it but that's it's just so funny to me like it was just the absolute hatred for this movie that i i'd never even seen because i'd heard all these terrible things about it and now uh along with 1978's halloween halloween 3 those two movies i watch on halloween every single year and i think christy you hit the nail right on the head that just the ambiance of halloween 3 a lot like 1978's halloween it's just so good. It just feels like Halloween and there's just, mm -hmm. there, there, you can't say enough about it. So um, yeah. it's just, it, it's funny. You, you, I don't know that I've ever talked to somebody who's like, man, the first time I saw Halloween three and 19, you know, I when I saw it in the theaters, it was awesome. I would love that. Like, I don't no. think I've actually yeah, I've talked to somebody who said that. that. No, yeah. no. So <laughs> yeah, no, that's funny. So talk about some of the other sequels that you're a fan of. Let's, let's, let's start out talking about the ones that you, you, you're like, man, I, I love these things. These are great. I, I would watch these any day of the week. Talk about which ones you really like of the sequels. Okay. Well, obviously um, H2 um, H and, and I watched both H1, H2 last night. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Um, but that's kind of my storyline that I like is H1, H2 and H2O. That's my okay. storyline. Um, yeah. But H2, I love just because like, you know, it's, it's, it's the perfect sequel in my opinion, if we're going with the, the sister thing. And but you know what they didn't even have to say that in in part two and it's still a perfect sequel like you didn't even have to say that really wow. um, it just goes right into the into the night at the hospital I mean how I mean how is that not perfect I don't understand how that's not perfect because some, right. some people don't think it is right. but I also like hospital movies I like anything uh, in a hospital so I like it for that too um, of course H three um, and then H four. Uh, to me, H4 is like the perfect, like 80s. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, you want to say, I, I just need a good 80s Halloween movie, Halloween 4. Everything in there just screams 80s, like the hair, yeah. the costumes, the outfits, everything in that movie. Um, and I love Danielle, of course. Um, and I mm -hmm. like that little storyline with her. So yeah, I love H four. I can watch that over and over again too. Sure. Yeah, even oh. even Michael Myers is wearing uh, shoulder pa pads now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's so eighties. Michael has shoulder pads. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love that. <laughs> and That's I like um, I like his mask in part four. Um, I like the mask in one, two, and four, and then after that, it kind of gets a little cattywampus for me. A little weird. Yeah. The mask. 
that is start it. deviating from Shatner after that point. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it just gets, yeah. It's, <laughs> and it's I love bizarre. it too. I love H2O, which I watched earlier as well. Um, but then I was like, you know what? I just really don't like that mask. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's definitely, it's weird seeing his eyes and everything in that movie too. Yeah. And his hair is just like, like he just like stuck his finger in a light socket. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. We had, we had a, who was the guest on? And I don't, I don't think it was Chris Durand. Uh, we had a guest on and we talked a little bit about this that, you know, even at the beginning of H2O, they have the, the recreation voice of Dr. Loomis and he, they do the, you know, the devil's eyes, the blackest eyes. And then mm-hmm. literally his eye holes are giant in that movie. You yeah, know, it's, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I don't, I don't, I think that was Connor from Creepy Customs who pointed oh, that was out. I yeah. was like, yeah, what a great point. We literally zoom into his black eyes and then, you know, the next shot of him is, you know, huge. Yeah. yeah. No. Right. It's like yeah. his eyes are up here some too. Like, I don't know. You see all this down. I don't know. It's a little weird. It's weird. It is. I, I, I like the H two O. Yeah, no, that makes sense. That makes sense. And then, uh, you know, what about what, what about five and six? Uh, where where do those where do those land for you? Okay, I I, I, I do like five because um, you know it's just a continuation of four kind of, and you know, right. I love my eighties stuff, and it's still real eighties. Um, it so I like five six kind of was my least favorite. It's not now um, with the new movies out, but it was. <laughs> right. I just felt that that particular movie, If okay, so let's not think about Resurrection just for two seconds. Yep. I felt like... Always happy to not think about Resurrection. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> I just watched that too. <laughs> uh, but part six to me, this, the story of that was just a little bland. Um, for me, I do like Paul Rudd in it, though. That, yeah. that doesn't bother me. What? And I hate to say this. I really do. But I just, I, I can't stand the actress they got to replace Danielle. Like, I cannot, like, that doesn't even seem like Jamie. It's just, I, I hate it. <laughs> right. <laughs> I don't like what, was, what was unfortunate is, is they cast, uh, you know, and nothing against the actress, but they cast a, no. a much older version of what Jamie should have been at that point as a 16 year old girl or 15 year old girl, whatever right. she would have been. Um, and it looks like this, this girl that they cast is in her, you know, mid twenties, you know, it just, it didn't, yeah. didn't make sense. It just, it's just, she just didn't work for me. Um, and she just wasn't believable as Jamie for me. And right. I just didn't like any of that, but yeah, Daniel just wasn't old enough yet right. To, right. to do it. Um, same thing with Child's Play. Alex wasn't old enough to do part three, which is why he didn't do part oh, three. Oh, that's a great. That, that's yeah. a great point. I never thought about that, but that's yeah, that's a great point. I wanted a teenager for that one. So yeah, yeah, that's a, that's a great point. So okay, so but but now six is you you do like six a little bit more. Is it is that you I said do it's grown on you? Yeah, it's like two. It's grown on me now. Same, <laughs> same thing. And Nightmare Toys, we're constantly playing these movies all the time, so we're constantly watching these things. That's awesome. <laughs> That's awesome. But, so, yeah. so you have a dream job, is what you're saying? Yeah, that's, that's <laughs> what I'm thinking. Yeah. Yeah. Are you hiring? Are you no. hiring? Can I move out to Las Vegas and can I we come? We are hiring. You? We are oh, hiring. We just made a post yesterday, actually. Oh, perfect. Oh, wow. There you go. Uh, there you go. I'm a person and someone answered the phone. <laughs> I'm I'm in the ex- the same exact position as you are where when I you know six was not I was not a huge fan of six for the longest time and then something happened probably about five or six years ago for me that I I don't know if I just watched it was in a great mood one night or something but it just kind of clicked for me and I was like okay I may not be the biggest fan of the the thorn thing right I can maybe right. forgive that a little bit but again I love the ambiance of that movie it feels very Halloweenish. I mean, it's you're talking the leaves and the trees, and and just it feels it feels like October to me, and that that resonates with me that I want a Halloween movie to feel like it's Halloween, um, and I thought they did a really good job with that. So that movie has has found its way up or down or however you want to look at it on my list, where I do like it more than maybe I did, uh, you know, a handful of years ago. Yeah, me too. I agree. I, uh, same. <laughs> yeah, that, it does it does scream Halloween. I, I love that. Yeah. And then, so we talked about H2O. You like that? We're both fans of H2O ourselves. Let's let's go to Resurrection. Where 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 do you stand with Resurrection? Okay, so my worst one was actually Part Six, and then 
and then I liked Resurrection, and then Part Six was my worst. It was. Um, now at this point, I just think Resurrection is just a fun movie to watch. I could probably watch it all the time at this point now because <laughs> it's so fun to me. Sure. <laughs> uh, it's it's one of those movies. It's one of those movies that it's it's. Um, you know, I, I think in a way we, we sort of talked about this, that the Halloween franchise uh, was whether you like Halloween Resurrection or not. The Halloween franchise at that point was probably about its lowest point as far as what was going to happen with the franchise moving forward. Right. Yeah. So Halloween uh, Resurrection holds a special place in my heart because it was the first Halloween film that I saw in the theaters. And we had uh, Brad Lurie on the show and we were talking about this. And when Austin and I were little, um, you know, I, I had the mask. Or I'm, I'm a little bit older than Austin, but I had the mask. And he, you know, he obviously inherited it basically for me after I moved out. And, uh, you know, so it was it's a movie that holds a very special place in my heart. There are certain aspects of it that drive me insane it was very early 2000s i do like the idea behind this sort of new age internet thing they're doing the internet show i i like that idea like i thought that was really cool and of course i love the fact that they brought back the myers house as well i thought that was a great touch yeah yeah oh yeah i thought that was a great touch too that tied it in really well um yeah and it was just it was just what was going on at the time i mean all the the reality shows were just starting at that time so yeah they just put that in there you know, like with H2O, some people like to, you know, kind of shit on the cast, but those were the actors and actresses that were popular at that time. So yeah. it just worked. So, I mean, it's just, you know, the story worked, though. Oh, yeah. Did resurrection need to be made? Probably not. But, you know, it it but it got made. We have it. So we just need to enjoy it and be like, okay, this is just fun and ridiculous at this point. Let's just stop shitting on it. Right. <laughs> you know? um, but yeah, I think H2O had a perfect ending. You know, if we didn't do resurrection and didn't say that it wasn't him, uh, yes. chopping his head off was perfect. And that was a, just a perfect ending. And the story of H2O was just perfect in my opinion, compared to what they've done now. Agreed. Yeah. yeah, we 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 did an episode sort of talking about the the timelines of Halloween, and I kind of talked about how <laughs> a lot of people will just say H one, H two, H two O, and forget about Resurrection, even though it is technically part of that you know four story bit, timeline. Yeah. Um, and and that actually tied for me with another one for my favorite. Um, I love the the way that Laurie's character progresses in H two O. Um, and then obviously, you know, you kind of revert a little bit in, in uh, resurrection, but yeah, no, yeah. I, hearing you talk about resurrection does make me feel a little bit better about it. I mean, it, during that time you had, uh, Jason going to space, leprechaun going to the hood. It was insane. <laughs> so when you look yeah. back on it, maybe not so crazy. No, it's not crazy. He hasn't yeah. gone to space or the hood or done anything crazy or Manhattan or New York yeah. or anything yet. <laughs> true. Right. No, it's, it's true. Oh, I know that. The, 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 What's that? Say it again. That's next. Watch. Oh. In another 10 years, we're going to get another Myers movie. And now he's going to be in New York. Right. Um, no. Yeah. You, you never know what's next. I know at one point there was a rumor. There was a rumor out there that John Carpenter had said the only way he'd come back to ever do another Halloween film was that if they took Michael to space. And I, I was like, I was always thinking, I hope he was sort of tongue in cheek when he said that because I don't want to see that. Like, I, I don't want to no, see a Michael either. Myers. No. As much as I no. love the franchise, we have a whole podcast about it. I don't want to see Michael go to space. You know? No, I don't. I'm, I'm with you. <laughs> no, it, it, it's it's great that you you kind of talk about resurrection like that because it does hold a special place in my heart. Um, I watch it every October. It, it's it's always in the rotation for me. And like we always talk about, even the worst Halloween films, in our opinion, are still great films because we love the franchise. And you know, yeah. we may like some more than others, but that's just the way that it is. So, yeah. all right. So we've talked about sort of the classics. I'm gonna we'll we'll, we'll say you know H one through H eight are like the classics. Those are like the the originals, right? And then we get into Rob Zombies. Where do you land with with the Rob Zombie remake? I I love his remake. Okay. I'm a little I'm a little weird because when we talk about this new trilogy, I don't like what they've done to Michael Myers and how they've portrayed him in those. But he's portrayed like that somewhat brutal in Rob Zombies. I don't mind it because that's Rob Zombies take. Yeah. 
So I don't mind that with his. And I, I love it. I think it's a perfect uh, remake. He even recreated a bunch of scenes It it and added some of his own thing. Like I said, Michael Myers is even more brutal in his than in the original 78, which I don't mind. Absolutely. I like the mask in it. The actors and actresses were great. I absolutely loved it. I love the story. He put more of a backstory, which I loved. I love that. Okay, so I was a dancer for 17 years, so I love that the mom was a dancer <laughs> and that yeah, they made yeah. Abbott and Ed a strip club. <laughs> right. right. You know, he took the matches and all it says Red and Red Lounge. That could be anything, but he made yeah. it into a strip club. So at that time when the movie came out, I thought that was cool. Um, <laughs> yeah. But, you know, and then, you know, his whole life just being shitty. You know, I, yeah. I like that. And, and some people I know don't like that, uh, that backstory, but I think it's fantastic. Um, part two, no. It was fine at the beginning of the movie when he was doing the whole hospital thing. And I thought that he was going to just recreate the whole movie in the hospital, like the original part two, and then we didn't get that. No. And then the rest of the movie is just like, what is happening? It's an acid trip. It, so right. I was just about to say, it's like a Michael Myers acid trip. Yeah, and it just, yeah, the rest of it didn't work for me, no. <laughs> I, I couldn't agree more. I mean, that's that's it's very similar. We we again have very similar takes on it. Um, I I tend to be in more of the camp that I I don't want to know as much about why Michael is the way that he is. But here's the deal: I respect the hell out of Rob Zombie for doing what he did. He he made yeah. it his own. I would not have wanted to necessarily see a complete shot for shot remake or a remake that. He didn't he didn't have that, you know, that autonomy to do what he wanted with it. And that's really what he did is he made it his own. And that's what I appreciate about that film. So even though I don't necessarily want to know a ton about the backstory, I appreciate that he did that. And, and I think you talked about, you know, the actors love what they did, love that they brought Daniel Harris back. Um, Scout Taylor Compton, she did a nice job with with Lori. And um, she was at a, a convention that at, Scout Taylor Compton was at a convention that I was at last September. And somebody brought up, they, they asked her a question. They said, what does it feel like to be one of only two people that will probably ever play Lori Strode. And I was like, that kind of hit me for a second because I had never really thought about that before that, yeah. you know, there's a lot of responsibility that comes with that role. And she did it. I think she did a good job. I mean, Jamie Lee Curtis is Jamie Lee Curtis, right? She's the queen, but, but, you know, Scout Taylor Compton did a great job. Yeah, I think so too. Yeah. I didn't, you know, you know I didn't really think of it that way until you just like said it. So yeah, right. Right. <laughs> she's a sweet and girl. It, I love her. Yeah, yeah, she seemed very. I, I, I didn't actually meet her. I sat in her Q and A, but she seemed, she seemed very down to earth and very cool. So, oh, yeah, and that, so that's always fun to see. Yeah, that's yeah. that's cool. And you know, Halloween too. Uh, yeah, you, you you said it. It's an acid trip. That's that's basically what it is. And that's where I, I agree that like what Rob did with H one was awesome. He made it his own, but he just took it to an extreme with H two where. It was like, what in the hell? I mean, there's that whole, I, I think it's like a dream sequence where there's like the pumpkin head guy and like it, there's they're sitting at this big table, almost like the, you know, the um, Last Supper sort of scene. I mean, it was just very, very bizarre than the white horse. Yeah. And it was just, it crossed the line, you know? Um, so, so that's, that's interesting that you say that, but Did really. You like what, wearing a mask too for like a minute? Yeah, Didn't there was, yeah. Dude, like yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. which was which was really interesting because we'd never you know we'd never had that before we'd seen that in friday the 13th but we'd never really gotten uh you know a true shot of michael completely unmasked i mean obviously you had tony moran in in you know 1978 where you saw him for a nanosecond without the mask on but you'd never gotten that kind of shot so that's another great point i don't really want to see michael unmasked you know i want that mystery to be there he also oh, speaks in that movie too which is a little yeah uh, yeah yeah no, that's a yeah. great point. That's a great point. Um, one of the things that that you and I talked about uh, as we were kind of organizing organizing the show and getting it lined up was, and and what I'm most excited to hear you talk about is the fact that, and I don't want to put words in your mouth, so I'll let you tell this tell tell your reasons why. But you are not a fan of the trilogy, correct? No, no, okay. I'm so not. Let's let's get into that because I I here I don't know if you've watched any of our episodes, but Austin and I are fans of of 18, and we're fans of ends. We're not fans of kills. So um, I want to, I'm going to be curious to hear what you have to say, some of the similarities, things that we think uh, alike, you know, with, with certain aspects of the movies, but tell us why is it that you're, you're not a fan of the new David Gordon Green trilogy? Okay. So first off, since it's a trilogy, I look at all three as a whole as like one movie. So I don't really like separate them and say, I like this one, but I don't like these. I look at the whole thing. 
Um, but if I had to say that, then I guess 18 was the better one out of the three. It was more structured, I guess. Um, I just don't, for me, I don't like the storyline whatsoever. Like, I hate it. I hate... I like <laughs> let me let me let's talk about the good points. Yeah, let's do, yeah, let's talk about good stuff first. Yeah. James Duke Duke Courtney did a fantastic job being Michael. I have no Absolutely. problem with that. He was great. He looked fantastic. His portrayal of Michael was fantastic. Now later on, as Michael gets like stronger or whatever the hell is going on with him. He transcends. Um, yeah. kills. <laughs> yes, he portrays that good, but that's not James Duke Courtney's fault that he was doing all that. That's whoever wrote this crap. So, <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> um, and Chris Nelson's special effects were fantastic. You can't deny that. I will never deny that. In all three movies, special effects and all that was fantastic. It was great. Cannot deny that whatsoever. And I do talk to Chris sometimes. So hello, Chris. <laughs> and he does know my feelings about that. <laughs> Other than that, the rest of it was crap. Um, I don't. I love Judy Greer in everything she does. So don't get me wrong on this, but I hate her in this. I cannot stand her. She's horrible in this. I don't like her being um, Jamie Lee Curtis's daughter. I them two, I felt like didn't act good together. It did not did not work for me whatsoever. I didn't like um, the granddaughter was fine. That's fine. Um, I didn't like how they portrayed Lori. I like her in H2O because number one, she leaves town, which is believable. Totally. She becomes head mistress of the school. That's believable because she was studious. She was good at school, you know, so that's believable. She changes her name. That's believable. You would do that if the, all this stuff happened to you. You would leave. You would change your name. You would become an alcoholic. She was an alcoholic. Right. You no, know, so everything that they portrayed her in H2O was completely believable on what could happen, right? Yep. The way they're portraying her now in these three is just so off the fucking wall. It's just like, what are you doing? She stayed in the town and she became psychotic and became a guyver. Yeah. Austin yeah. Austin calls her Rambo Lori. And I think that's the perfect, yeah. Guyver. I mean, yeah. I, I don't know. I, and, and, God, I'm going to say something that everybody's going to hate me for. And I've said it before. <laughs> Okay, I love Jamie Lee Curtis. Yes, she's Laurie Strode. Yes, she's fantastic. But in these three movies, I felt like her acting was horrible. It, it, she just it, she just didn't seem Laurie Strode to me anymore. And I really figured that out when I just watched H2O again, right before I we did this. And I'm like, her acting in this this one, which should have been the last one, was fantastic. It was it was Jamie Lee Curtis. And in these, it just seems her acting is like pushed. It's so over the top. Like it's just, it just doesn't seem like the best of her acting ability to me in these three movies at all, especially kills. It's just horrible. Than being in that hospital. Oh, That's just yeah. a thriller movie. That one didn't even need to be made. They made that only because, Oh, let's make this a trilogy. So let's just do this. And that's what they did you. for Kills. Yep. <laughs> we we as I mentioned, we're not we're not Kills fans. Uh, it has its moments. I love like I, I personally love Big John, Little John, and that they brought the Myers House back. I thought that was a really cool little touch that they were they sort of reinvented the Myers House and retold that story. There are some cool parts in it. There's obviously some cool kills, but I think yeah. to your point, I think it, it as it. In general, I think there was a lot of overacting done between the three movies. And I don't know if it was maybe a combination of overacting and some writing that was just not great. Obviously, the Evil Dies Tonight thing drove me bananas. Like, I was, it was, just, it was terrible. Yes, it was absolutely horrible. And, uh, you know, so I do completely understand where you're coming from with that and and i agree with you 100 also that the the laurie strode that we got in halloween h2o 
Love that Lori Strode. The, the Rambo Lori, MacGyver Lori, not as much of a fan of that, right? Doesn't seem as realistic. Yeah. I mean, it's just, H2O is just, just. The, I know a lot of people don't like that one, but it's just so 90s. Yep. But let's just look at the story itself. It's perfect. It, it goes right along with H1, H2, and that little storyline. And again, everything they have her going on is completely believable in what could happen. You chop his head off too. That's believable for him to die and we're done. Yep. And then resurrection. But, <laughs> <laughs> yep. but so this storyline, like with Michael, like I don't like him either because they just they're saying, I guess they're saying as time as this as the three goes on, he gets stronger and stronger and stronger. And now he's throwing cars and he's doing this and he's doing stuff that Jason would do or Leatherface would do. And that's not what he was doing in 78. They, they totally right. took um, what made Michael Myers uh, different and what made him fantastic and said they totally, for me, just ruined it because that's not that's to me, that's not Michael Myers. Um, he was mysterious, you know, and he maybe just stabbed you or strangled you and that was it. And now he's just doing all this crazy stuff and all this stuff's happening. It's more into an action movie now and all the gore. I'd also don't need all of that gore. Um, I know we got some more gore and blood as the series did go on, but this is just way over the top that I did not need in a Michael Myers Halloween movie. I understand there's Myers fans that wanted it and they got it and they love it. Um, but then there's the other half of us. This is where the horror community and the Myers community is very divided, I think, because I've seen everybody talk. Um, but then there's the other people like me where I I don't like that they did all that. with. I didn't need all that with Michael. I don't want him to be that way. I, I, it's too much. It's way too right. much. Totally. Yeah. I, the, the, the swift like Reaper version of Michael that you get in 78, I think to this day is yet to be really recreated right. uh, where you see right. what you're talking about. That mysterious, like he was slow moving and he's always in the shadows. Like you know, right. that whole movie, yeah. even when he's not in the scenes, you feel like he's there. And, and uh, like I said, to this day, even in H2, which I'm with you, I love H2. I think there's more of it in that than maybe the new trilogy, but you still like that, the feeling that that first one gives you, um, you don't really get that. And that's what I was looking yeah. forward to with this new trilogy because they were going right back to 78, but I'm with you that that isn't really what we got. Um, we did get a much more like Jason um, type Michael. in these. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and that just disappointed me. And I didn't like, I don't know, I didn't like the doctor in 2018 when he ended up turning. I was like, what? Oh, my God. I didn't like it. <laughs> yeah, he's got the inspector gadget, like, pen that turns yeah. into a knife. Yeah. yeah. Made no wow. sense. No, that was that was a terror. And, and that's what I mean. Just some of the writing on it was was just it was a little too far out there. Just some of the lines, even, you know, from, yeah. from 18 all the way through ends, there was just some things. And, and I agree that, uh, you know, they, they definitely took Michael through or across the supernatural line. He went from a man to, okay, now we can see he's more supernatural. And I, I get that there's the argument maybe going then to ends that he was sort of this, you know, sewer dwelling crippled old man who was beaten down. Um, yeah. And, and obviously, you know, clearly by your reaction, you, you absolutely hated that. Right. So let's, let's talk. About that. And then mm -hmm. how they ended up killing him. Are you kidding me? <laughs> oh my God, y'all. It's like, this is what we do. Okay. Back again. H2O. We chopped his head off. Perfect. What are we doing? But yeah, right. he was in the sewers. <laughs> Yeah. Like, I'm so just like, what on that? He's in the sewers. And then the only thing I did like about ends was the whole Corey story. If we uh, would have taken Michael out of it, not called a Halloween movie, and then we would have had that movie, that would have been a great standalone type slasher movie. Would have had another great killer to like because I really liked the Scarecrow mask and I liked what yeah. was going on with that story. And he takes his mask off. <laughs> Who the fuck takes Michael Myers' mask off? You don't do that. You don't take anybody's mask off. You don't do that. You don't take Leatherface's mask off or Myers. 
I couldn't believe that even happened. How could they put that in there? That drove me crazy. <laughs> yeah. I mean, and, and, so easily. What are you talking about? No. Yep. yep. And we, we talked about that in one of our episodes. We kind of talked about like the, the top five things that people don't like about Halloween ends. And that was one of them was the fact that they took Michael's mask and, and how it was almost sacrilegious in a way. Like you, you don't take Michael's mask. Like nobody no. takes Michael's mask. He should have, no. he should have, you know, absolutely destroyed Corey for doing that, which he ultimately does in a way, but it comes much later in the movie. And I think Austin says it best that, you know, when he kills Michael, I'm sorry, when he kills Corey at the end of Halloween ends, it's sort of like a, I'm back, bitch. That, that, that's kind yeah. of the move, right? I mean, it's just, he, he, right. he stomps on him and it's just, it's game over. Um, but I, I love the Corey Cunningham character as well. I thought that was, I thought, uh, I think it was Rohan Campbell. He did a fantastic job with that, uh, yeah. you know, in that, in that role. Um, I, I liked the Allison Corey sort of love story that was going on, which is weird yeah. for a horror film, but I just thought it was well done. It wasn't over the top. Um, yeah. I did. And I liked that you saw these parallels and similarities between Corey and Michael and, you know, him standing off in the distance kind of behind the bushes or him sneaking around on, you know, or up to uh, Lori without her knowing. That some of those things were done really well, um, but I can certainly understand, obviously, why fans don't like it, you know. And that's why we always say we're, we're kind of we're all are welcome, all encompassing here at, at Halloween Lives. Like whether you like them or not, we we still respect everybody's opinions. But man, yeah. that movie divided the Halloween franchise fans like I've never seen divided before. Listen, to this day, it really did. Um, yeah, <laughs> I'm not on Facebook anymore, but I had to get off Facebook. Yeah, but yeah. So yeah, let me ask you this. Yeah. Do you, do you <laughs> see, do you see any of those three movies, uh, you know, growing on you where maybe 10 years from now, you're like, you know, I, I watched it a few more times. Maybe it's not so bad. Or do you think your, your opinion of them is pretty rock solid at this point? It's pretty rock solid. Like okay. I really, I, I own the movies because I'm a completionist in my movie collection. So I do own them. I've yeah. watched two of them. 18 twice and i've only watched the other ones once and i just have no interest in really watching them if i'm in a mood for a myers movie it, it's not those it's not going to be those it's, it's it's the original or two or four or something it's not going to be these new ones whatsoever hey fair <laughs> enough you, you you you've made your decision and that's i i totally totally get that so where do you think the halloween franchise goes next do you want to see it continue do you want to see us just be done with the whole thing where if you had the the, the keys of the lamborghini where are you taking this thing um for me at this point i think we should be done i don't think we need any more um i think another good point with this whole series if we look at all the other series like nightmare on elm street child's play all that this series is so um like there's just different stories going on. It's not consistent at all. The very convoluted. Yeah. yeah, you've got in a way what what th maybe three stories, maybe three different storylines you can go with, or three or four. You know, I don't know, but it's very inconsistent series compared to all the other series. Um, and the look of Myers is very inconsistent. For sure. Yeah. Jason, you know, his mask is different, but I think it's just, you know, it's just aging and things are happening. So I can deal with that. But with Myers, it's so inconsistent. Um, I don't know. I, I just don't feel like we need any more now. I think they they they've ruined it. Uh, <laughs> they ruined like, I mean, what else are you gonna do now? No, you know? yeah. I don't know. Right. I'm and we, we've sure. already checked the box. We don't want him going to space. We, we don't want, no, you know, Leprechaun no, we, and no. the, yeah. we, we don't want any of that. Made, yeah. We have already made him ridiculous. We don't need to, we don't need to make it more ridiculous and have him going to space. <laughs> yeah. No, for sure. No, I, That's just my I, opinion. I, I get that. You know, we have younger people coming in and they're like, Oh, we need another one. Everybody wants another Freddie and another Jason. And da, da, da. Um, the only one I could really say that I wouldn't mind another one of would be Jason. Maybe, but I wouldn't. I don't want another nightmare movie either. Right. Um, right. Robert Englund's just. Yeah, unless you can bring him back, I, I don't think you. Yeah. You know, I think I think that the remake was obviously you know just a little bit of a miss because of that. It was just too different, right? I mean, you just you didn't have Robert there to to portray that character, and it didn't feel right. It didn't it didn't feel yeah. like a, a nightmare movie? Right. So no. I don't know. I just don't feel like it anymore. 
I think you also bring up a good point because I think at this point, if you're a, you know, let's say you're that, you're that, uh, you know, 10, 12 year old kid or whatever it might be. And you're just discovering horror movies and you're starting to get into it. It's, it's going to be really tough for somebody to come into the series now because there are so many sort of choose your own endings, uh, yeah. you know, directions that you can take this thing where, you know, really realistically, when the three of us were watching these movies as, as they were coming out, they were still sort of, all kind of on the same timeline for the most part. I mean, yes, you had some variations in the story, whether it was the Thorn trilogy or, or whatever it might be, but you had, uh, you know, you had this, uh, this, this continuity, I guess was maybe a little bit more there where now it's like, wow, what, what, uh, you know, what, what do we got going ahead? Or how, how do I choose? How do I choose my own ending? Right. And, and right. unless you're just going to start at the beginning and work your way up, uh, that would be the only way to do it, but it could be very confusing. I think that's where maybe a lot of people get down on these kind of movies. Cause they're like, Jesus Christ, they're bringing them back again. Didn't they kill him in that one? Did they kill him in this one? Didn't they cut his head off? Now these, I get it. Right. I mean, I, I get it, but as a horror fan, as, as a, uh, you know, a huge fan of the franchise for me personally, we hope that it lives on. We, we want more Michael, give us more Michael, but I, I certainly respect and understand your opinion where you're like, Hey, you've done it. You've killed them off so many different times. Let's let's move on with life, you know. So I get I it. Like I feel like you know, newer horror fans just need to just need to appreciate and like what had already been done in the original and what was already fantastic instead of t- trying to keep remaking it and and keep doing it for whatever's happening in the world at the time and all that. No, let's just you know, seventy eight Halloween. This is this is the Michael Myers you need to to watch and see. And right. That's the original. And it holds up to this day. I think so. It I does. Mean, yeah. It does. No, I mean, Christy. Uh, it, it? You know, you, you, you said it perfectly. I mean, Halloween, this 78 is, it's the ultimate. Uh, if, if I was going to tell any fan, you know, who'd never seen any of the Halloween movies, Hey, which one should I watch? And you can't watch any of the others. Of course you're going to 78 by, That's you know, hands good. down. No, no, no yeah. question. So, no, that's uh, that's awesome, Christy. Um, we're uh, we're running out of time, but um, where can people find you at? What uh, wh- what's the website that people can go to to find out more about Nightmare Toys? Oh yeah, so uh, nightmaretoys.com is our website, and we are on all social media. Nightmare Toys and Nightmare Cafe are on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, um, TikTok. We have our YouTube channel as well. Please go subscribe to our YouTube channel because we also do our podcast, Nightmare Podcast. We do Deadly Destinations, which is our new show, which is really fun. I love it. Um, I just did an episode in Huntsville, Alabama, where we're from. I just We just went back there for this past weekend, and I did uh, the Dead Children's Playground in Huntsville. So that's going to be our next one. And I got love to it. take real pictures because I got to go there. Um, awesome. So that's going to be our next one. And I also do my live with Christy every Wednesday on the YouTube as well. So that's on there. Um, And we, you know, show products and stuff. Uh, We just put, we're putting out a new video. Mezco just came out with the H2 Michael Myers 112 figure. And we just got that in. That's right. And we just did a new video on it today. So that should be going out on our YouTube here shortly as well. Um, And then myself, you can find me on all my social media. I am on Instagram, Twitter, and I have an OnlyFans and Little Fans. And everything is under Nightmare Christy. Awesome. Well, Christy, we cannot thank you enough. Uh, You've been a sweetheart. We love to have you on. Let's do it again sometime. And, uh, you know, make sure you send Austin and I an application and we can uh, can get away out to Vegas and some work for you. (laughs) <laughs> You're tired already. Trust me. Awesome. I'm <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you so much. Uh, guys, make sure you check out Christy and all her social uh, media handles and obviously check out nightmare toys as well. Um, yeah, Austin, I'm sure you're just going to say it, but drop some links in this as we, uh, as we, as we throw this thing out there, but Christy, thank you so much. Have a wonderful evening and uh, we'll be in touch soon. You too. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks. Thank you. That was Amazing. awesome. Yeah, yeah, that was cool. You know, the thing is, is like you and you and I have talked about this before that. I mean, the idea to have like a, a literal horror store where oh. it you just it's, it's a target, right? Or like she said, it's a Toys R Us, right? It's a, it's a Toys R Us, but it's all horror stuff. And then obviously there's there's more, right? There's there's she was talking about shoes and T-shirts. And I know they've got VHS videos. I mean, they have all kinds of stuff. It's it's literally like my. <laughs> my dream place to work. You know, I worked oh. at a spirit Halloween for one season. And I thought that was awesome. I think working at a place like that would be, would just be so, so cool. First of all, I would be so nervous to go in 
because <laughs> I'm going to walk out in severe debt. Like I'm going to go yeah. get a credit card <laughs> just for that. So I can max it out at uh, nightmare toys. The, I, I don't think I would be able to uh, live fiscally responsibly if I lived near, uh, right. first of all, Las Vegas, but second of all, uh, nightmare toys. Um, yeah. I'd be moving back in with mom and dad. It would be, I'd be in their really. basement. I'd be like, but I'd have a really sweet bedroom. I mean, I'd have like all this horror stuff I mean, that would be, you know, and like t-shirts and, and stuff, but I, it would literally paycheck gone. Oh yeah. And and wow. to that, I say totally, 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 totally. We haven't, we didn't play totally last week. We didn't do, we didn't do any of that. So thank you for, thank you for hitting us with a totally. We'll try to get it in one more time before this episode is over, but yeah, definitely. Thank you to Christy for coming on. Make sure you guys check out uh, all of her social media. And uh, you know, if you're in the Vegas area, hit up nightmare toys. I guarantee you, if you don't know what it is, I guarantee you, uh, you will, You'll be pleasantly surprised when you when you go there. So, um, yeah, that's 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 awesome. Very cool of her to come on the show, and and I know she's got her own podcast too. And I did check out, uh, you know, their their Deadly Destinations show. Very cool idea. I mean, we're big paranormal fans. We love doing some paranormal stuff. Which brings me to yeah. uh, one thing that we're going to talk about here uh, is that we are going to we're, we're throwing this out there now. Um, and hold on, I gotta actually, I gotta check the calendar to make sure that I get this date correct. Cause I don't want to speak, uh, incorrectly, but on Friday, July 7th, it is going to be our 25th show. It's going to be live 25. We're going to be doing our own live show. That weekly show is going to be live. So we're giving you guys lots of warning now. We're going to be taking all kinds of questions about the show, about the series, whatever it might be. We might even bring on some special guests, but we're going to be doing a live, our very first live show, July 7th. So mark your calendars, check it out. Time is a little bit TBD, but it's going to be in, you know a little bit later in the evening, probably like you know eight, nine o'clock Eastern, something like that. Um, but yeah, live 25, it's going to be July 7th. And then we're going to be just doing something even cooler because the next night we're going to be actually uh, doing probably a little bit. We're probably going to be doing some more live streaming that night, but we're going to be investigating a very haunted location, an unnamed haunted location somewhere in the Midwest. And we're going to be filming that and we'll probably throw it up on the channel, but it's going to be a blast, dude. I'm looking forward to that. Oh, it's going to be amazing. Um you know, it, it's kind of fun because we've kind of got these like little specials that are starting to happen on this show, um, like the draft and obviously this live 25. Um, just fun kind of switching it up uh, for the people that watch every week. First of all, thank you. Second of all, yes. this is kind of a, a, a nice, you know, little change of pace um, for you. And, and you know, it seems like people enjoyed the draft. So I think people are going to enjoy this as well. Yeah, if you like paranormal stuff, if you like ghosts and hauntings and all that good stuff, you're in good company here. Um, we'll probably do a few more of those kind of episodes later on, maybe branch out a little bit. We've got some ideas, some things that we're working on. But uh, July 7th, mark your calendars right now, July 7th, the evening of July 7th. Join us live for uh, our very first Halloween Lives live podcast. Um, Going to be a lot of fun. Looking forward to it. So, uh, yeah, thank you once again to Christy for coming on the show. Let's talk about our. Well, should we do the birthday surprise? Should we save that for the end? I think we should save that for the end. Okay, let's let's do uh, fan of the week. Walk us through it. What do you got? So Oof. this Oof. is one that give we it to me, about. baby. <laughs> this thing is literally amazing. So uh, this is a like I struggle. I named it the Blu-ray holder, but that just doesn't do it justice. It is. Yeah, it is. A Myers House diorama, which which we've had those on the show before in in the fan appreciation section, um, and this like also serves a a utility purpose, and it's to store all your freaking Halloween movies, dude. Like yeah. you got them all. Why not put them in a in a sweet decoration? Um, and I mean this this is done by Mister Zombies Workshop on Etsy. Um, when these first started coming out, I mean, you could see them on any Halloween fan page, Instagram, Facebook, wherever you get your Halloween fix. Um, people are freaking out about this. You can see up here. I just took this screenshot before we recorded. It's in 20 plus car carts right now. So if you're thinking about it, get it in your cart, order it. Um, it's 80 bucks. They're handmade. They look incredible. And what better way to, to store the franchise now if they make more movies? 
you're going to have to give it like a shed or something. I don't know what you're going to do. <laughs> yeah, right. The garage that burns down in Halloween Resurrection, you're going to have to build it so it can go on the side. Dude, exactly. yeah, that, that thing is freaking sweet. That's, you know, that's honestly what I love about this community in general, like just the horror community in general, is people come up with some badass ideas, you know, and, and this is just one of them where it's like, I mean, something, a, a very simple idea that, you or I, or I don't have the talent to do. Well, you, you do. I don't, let's be honest. You would have the talent to do this. I don't have the talent or the time. And, and this dude, obviously Mr. Zombies workshop, uh, you know, he did his, uh, he did his magic here and that thing is freaking sweet. I need one of them. So Mr. Zombie, if you got one that, uh, you know, maybe fell off the shelf or, you know, fell off the back of the truck on the way to the UPS store, whatever it might be, hit me up. I'll give you my, my address. Cause that thing is badass. Yeah, no, I mean, it is, it is like a perfect decoration. Like now, again, it serves a purpose, but it's a decoration. I love stuff like that, man. Uh, yeah, definitely. I wonder, so uh, can you go back to the picture again real quick? Yeah. Uh, so what, it, can, I guess you can't really see how many, it looks like it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. So all of them can fit, right? Is that where we're at? Uh, yeah, I believe so. I think, I think, yeah, because he's got ends in there, so you know it's okay. Yeah, so there you go. I mean, it literally, Today. it has has all of them. That's no, that's freaking sweet. It'd be cool if he figured out a way to do that with all of them. Like you could do, you could obviously do like a cabin for Friday the Thirteenth. You could do, um, you know, the the house from A uh, Nightmare on Elm Street. You could do the Texas Chainsaw Massacre house. I mean, you could do all kind of Amityville, like whatever. There'd be. There's like a plethora of ideas that you could do there. That's that's freaking badass. Oh yeah, it w- it's definitely one of my favorite things that I've seen come out uh, yeah. recently. Just because it's not like it's not a mask, it's not you know kind of the usual merch that people are getting. It's it's very much unique, and I think it's super cool. Yeah, um, that that is badass. Very cool. Good job, uh, Mister Zombies Workshop. Check him out on Etsy. Um, just some talented people out there, and and uh, you know we respect the hell out of those people for you know, obviously doing it and, and giving fans like us something to get excited about. And as soon as you and I saw that thing, I, I think we literally like texted each other damn near at the same time. Like, dude, check this thing out. Um, so that's, yeah, that's very cool. Yeah. I, I, uh, the second I saw it, I was like, Oh, that's going to go on the show because that is amazing. Yeah, so super cool. Um, yeah. If you guys have any fan of the week, cool things you want to show us, hit us up on Instagram. Um, and, uh, you know, see if we can get you on the show absolutely um, but before we kick the uh, birthday to me i'm knocking stuff over here i just got excited kick the bucket on this episode um i got i got somebody else that wanted to uh wish you a little belated happy birthday but a, a happy birthday nonetheless i'm looking for blaine this is blaine around <laughs> blaine i'm looking for the guy his name is blaine Oh, he's, you're Blaine. You're Blaine. Well, let me introduce myself. I'm Joe Grizzly, bitch. And you better quit telling people that I died in that fucking bathroom. Do I look dead to you, Susie? Hmm? Uh. I look dead to you? Happy birthday <laughs> from your brother and me. And may you have many, many, many more glorious, wonderful birthdays to come. I think that you have a podcast. And if people are interested in listening to your podcast, they should subscribe to Halloween Lives. <laughs> Tune in. Talk to Blaine. Somebody talk to this guy. I, you know, your brother loves you. And if you stop telling lies on me, Joe Grizzly, maybe I'll let you live a little longer. <laughs> Have a great one. Happy birthday. Oh, dude, that is freaking sweet. That is so cool. I was that is so awesome. happy when I watched that the first time, man. I I was like... I said three things. I was like, it's my brother's birthday. Um, we have a podcast called Halloween Lives. Uh, B. Joe Grizzly. I, I got four <laughs> things. 
and be vulgar. <laughs> so. Be vulgar. Joe Grizzly, bitch. Ken Faree himself. That is freaking, dude. That is awesome. Thank you very much. That is super cool. I, yeah. I, uh, well, go ahead. He has the best voice of all time. Man. Like, he does. He, he does, and and if like if you watch any of the movies that he's actually you know other movies obviously besides Halloween, he he's just such like a uh, like a dominating character. You know what I mean? In any movie that he's in, he he's just he's so freaking he's just a badass dude. And uh, yeah, dude, that is super cool. We Austin and I for joke for years like the whole Joe Grizzly bitch thing is like it as, as cheesy as it is, it's freaking hysterical and it's awesome yeah. it's just you know and i love the character that he that he brings to that also because obviously you know ken Furry, i saw him in in person at a uh a convention he's not that big of a dude like I, him and i are probably about the same size but they made him look big in oh, halloween and, and like he's eye to eye with michael tyler main in that movie right and he's he's looking at him and he's like you know he's he's just a badass dude he's like fuck you uh, you get out you know what he says like what's he say like uh some about Let take this this beast yeah he's he said he says that but you better catch it on the something whatever he said he's just like oh yeah i don't remember what his words are but dude <laughs> that is awesome i never i never thought that that uh good old joe grizzly bitch would have been uh wishing me a happy birthday so that's that's badass dude i appreciate it yeah of course i it was it was uh when I was looking, um, cause, cause we, it's, it's mother's day and I actually got something on cameo for mom as well. But I, I saw that Ken was on here and I was like, well, right. just going to double down, uh, birthday time here. So that's, that's freaking sweet, dude. I appreciate the hell out of that. That's, that's super cool. Uh, and I can now officially say that Ken free has wished me happy birthday and he gave us a shout out for our podcast. Like that's, you know that's that's super cool as well. And he so he called you a bitch a couple times. He, he did call me a bitch. Yes, he he did. So I, I do feel like there's probably only a handful of people that Ken Free has called a bitch. Now I am one of them. So uh, that is that's fantastic. And uh, who knows? Maybe we can try to get Ken on the show sometime. Um, I, I seems like a super cool dude. Again, I didn't meet him when at the convention that uh, that I was at, but um, seemed like a super cool dude. Very j- just down to earth, and um, I love. I also love his in Lords of Salem. I love the role that he plays when he's, he's the DJ in that movie. So, um, no, dude, great birthday present. I got the freaking t-shirt. I actually, you got me, you got me uh Halloween four on Blu-ray, which I didn't have Uh mm-hmm. Halloween four is my favorite sequel out of the whole, you know, the whole franchise. So it was a Halloween birthday. Uh, and that's super cool that you, uh, that you did that. So thank you. Yeah, absolutely, man. And, and, uh, like Joe Grizzly said, if, if, if you like Halloween, Subscribe to Halloween Lives, the podcast of Michael Myers. Uh, you can find us right here on YouTube, on on your podcast apps, or uh, right there on Instagram or TikTok. We do have TikTok because we want to connect to the youth. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of 14 year olds out there that we are trying to reel in, and we we need TikTok to make that happen. Blaine is notorious for reeling in 14 year olds. So with that, we are going to uh, end this episode of Halloween lives. The podcast of Michael Myers. Happy birthday, Blaine. Thank you uh, once more. And uh, we'll see you. We'll see you next week. uh, Next Friday. See you guys.